Hi, and welcome to Oars. This is a whitewater orientation video designed to prepare you for your river trip in a wild, dynamic, and exciting environment. Everyone on the trip will have an adjustable PFD, which is worn at all times while we're on the river. The PFD can be tightened by using the straps on the sides. We are all shaped differently, and some individuals may need the help of leg straps to help prevent the PFD from riding up. Your PFD must be worn with all buckles fastened and straps tightened at all times while on the river. You must also wear your PFD when swimming in the river. We require the use of helmets at all times while in a paddle boat or an inflatable kayak. And in some of the more intense rapids, we require helmets in all crafts. On every river trip, there is the possibility that you, a fellow rafter, or even your guide could fall out of the boat in a rapid and become an involuntary swimmer. If you fall out, stay calm. Try to do a 360 degree scan of your surroundings and be an active participant in your own rescue. The water may be cold and cause you to gasp. This is a normal reaction and will pass if you focus on your breathing. The goal is to get you out of the river as quickly as possible. So find your boat and grab onto the outside of it. Do not stand up in moving water. Even in light current, standing on the riverbed exposes you to a dangerous situation called foot entrapment. The bottom of the river can be rocky. If you stand up, it's possible for your foot to become lodged in between rocks. Even in shallow water, the river is powerful enough to knock you down, at which point your trapped foot could keep you underwater and cause you to drown. Always keep your feet up and away from the river bottom when you're swimming in the river. If you've fallen out and you can't grab onto the boat, get into what is called the defensive swimming position. The defensive swimming position is lying on your back with your feet up and facing downstream. Maneuver yourself by using a backstroke. If you think you're going to hit a rock, use your feet to push yourself off and away from the rock. As soon as you can, turn over onto your belly and swim aggressively back to the boat or to the shore. Look downstream and identify obstacles such as rocks as well as safe places like rafts. Look and listen for instructions from a guide on what to do and where to swim. If you're headed towards a dangerous spot in the river, you'll need to roll over onto your stomach and swim aggressively. Again, listen for your guide and always be prepared to swim aggressively away from danger and towards safety. Getting back in your boat can be difficult. To get back in, face the boat and hold on to it. When a fellow passenger or guide is ready to pull you back in, they'll grab onto the shoulder lapels of your PFD falling back into the boat and pulling you in. Do not pull anyone back into the boat by their arms. Each guide has a throw bag, which is a sack stuffed with rope. If the guide throws you the rope, they'll yell to get your attention. Swim aggressively to it and grab onto the rope with both hands, not the throw bag itself. Once you're holding on, roll over onto your back and get into the defensive swimming position with the rope over your shoulder. Whenever there's a rope in the water, you need to be careful to avoid becoming entangled in it. Never wrap the rope around you like your hand, and always be able to let go of the rope if your guide tells you to do so. If you have a paddle, try to hold on to it. If it inhibits you, let it go. It can be used as a tool to get you back into the boat. You can reach with your paddle, T-grip pointing to someone in the boat. And likewise, if you are in the boat, you can reach your paddle out to someone who is swimming. If you swim completely out of a rapid to the river bank, stay put. Let others know where you are and wait for your guide to come to you. If your guide happens to fall out of the boat, stay ready to paddle. Your guide may give you instructions from the water, or a guide on another boat may give you instructions on what to do. If the boat gets pushed up against a rock, there's a chance it could flip over or wrap around the rock. To try to keep that from happening, we'll attempt a prevention technique called a high side. Here's how it works. When a boat hits a rock broadside in a current, the water will begin to push the upstream tube down. At the same time, the downstream tube will start to ride up on the rock. The side that goes up is the high side. And if everyone moves their weight over to it and off the low side, it helps to keep the boat from flipping over or wrapping around the rock. If your guide calls for a high side, move fast. 
The high side is usually the downstream side of the boat and the side that is touching the rock. If the boat you're in flips over, make your way out from underneath it by using your hands to feel the boat above you and walk your hands in one direction until reaching the edge of the boat. Once you're on the surface, hold on to the boat. It's best to move to the sides of the raft and avoid being immediately upstream, where your view of what's coming up is obstructed, or downstream where you can get pinned between the boat and a downstream obstacle. Trees, logs, or piles of driftwood stuck in moving current are called strainers. As the name implies, water passes through these obstacles, but objects do not. If you are near a strainer, swim aggressively away from it. If there is no way for you to avoid it, you must go over the strainer by climbing on top of it. Depending on which oars trip you're on, you may be in a paddle raft. Refer to your trip literature to determine boat options. Each person in the paddle raft gets a paddle, which is used to propel the boat under the direction of your guide. A rafting paddle has a blade which goes into the water. The other end is a handle called the T-grip, which goes into your hand. To correctly hold your paddle, place your hand which is closest to the center of the boat over the T-grip. Then place your other hand on the shaft of the paddle. It's important to keep hold of the T-grip. Controlling your T-grip not only allows you to paddle when your guide needs you to, it also keeps your T-grip from swinging around inside the boat and possibly hitting somebody. Your guide will show you where to ride in the boat. It's important to avoid entanglements in loose lines and never tie yourself to the boat. The goal on a river trip is to have a great time and we want you to get the most out of your experience with us here at Oars. To help make sure that happens, we're asking you to follow the directions and guidance of your guides. We expect all participants, guides, and guests to conduct themselves in a respectful and caring manner. Alcohol must not be consumed either before or during a time when we are headed downriver. If you are found to be intoxicated before your trip, you will not be allowed to go. This is a strict rule of the river managing agencies. No exceptions. No illegal drugs or intoxicating substances are allowed on the river. Our trips operate on federal lands, so federal laws apply. Don't jump into the river unless a guide gives you the okay. There's absolutely no diving on the trip whatsoever. The bottom of the riverbed is rocky, the depth uncertain, and going into the water head first exposes you to serious injury or death. Evacuations can be lengthy, difficult, and dangerous, and in some cases may not be possible. Considering our distance from medical facilities, it is critical to always use caution and common sense and act responsibly. Please don't hike or swim alone, and always tell a guide where you're going. The intention of this whitewater orientation video is to prepare you for the risks and challenges that are a part of a river trip. The conditions will vary significantly depending on the river, the weather, and the time of year. Your guides will provide a detailed safety talk at the river and address the specifics of your river trip. If you have any questions or do not understand any of the concepts, give us a call. Send us an email or peruse the website to find your answer. And always, please make sure to ask your guide to go over it until the information is clear and complete. There are more risks involved with river trips than we have identified or could possibly list. New risks can spontaneously appear, and there are forces in nature that could be beyond any person's control. River trips occur in a dynamic natural environment where passengers cannot be made 100% safe, and personal safety cannot be guaranteed. Listen carefully to your guides and take responsibility for your own safety. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the river.